Let's step right into the main body of our crochet pouch. Grab your yarn in the color you want for the main body. We're gonna start from the chain. The number of chains you need will vary depending on how big you want your pouch to be. For this tutorial, I'll be using an AirPods Pro as a guide to show you the size. Let's start by crocheting a few chains that are slightly longer than the item you want to put inside, around 2 cm or so. Once you've got to the length, if you are still new to crochet, it's a good idea to count the number of chains you've made. This way, when you're reading the pattern, you can easily keep track of the stitches you need for each round. Now remember the number, it will be your end in the pattern, representing the number of chains you've made. So according to the pattern for our second round, we're gonna start crocheting from the third to last chain and work N-3 double crochets. Since I made 16 chains earlier, I'll be hooking up 13 double crochets for this round. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at where to start the first stitch. So now yarn over and insert your hook in the third to last chain. Then yarn over, pop a loop. Yarn over, put through the first two loops. Yarn over, put through the last two loops on your hook. That's a double crochet. You can put your stitch marker on the first stitch. And then continue working the remaining stitches. Once you complete the N-3 stitches, you should have only one chain left. Let's see you there. Here I've just finished my 13th stitch and we are left with the very last chain. It's time to insert 3 double crochets into the last chain. Yarn over, insert a hook into the last chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, put through the first two loops. Yarn over, put through two. And when you're crocheting the second double crochet, after wrapping the yarn and inserting the hook, we need to pull the remaining yarn tail through between the hook and the working yarn. And make sure to place that knot behind the working yarn. Now let's continue by pull up a loop. Yarn over, put through the first two loops. And then yarn over, put through two. So we can tuck the yarn tail inside the pouch rather than having it exposed on the outside. Next up, continue crocheting one more double crochet into the same chain. If you are a beginner and find it a bit confusing, no worries, I've got you covered. I've prepared a chain that is easy to see and understand. Imagine the orange yarn representing our initial chain and the white yarn represents the double crochet stitches we just made in the first round. So now let's focus on the current state where we need to crochet three double crochets into the last chain. So make our first double crochet. And for the second one, remember to pull the yarn tail between your hook and the working yarn. Next, we're going to insert another double crochet into the same hole of that chain. Once you've finished hooking those three double crochets, it's time to move on to the stitches on the other side of the chain. We're going to crochet n minus 4 double crochets in there, which means for me it's going to be 12 double crochets. 
So our hook needs to be inserted into the hole of the previously crochet double crochet on the other side, right here. Yarn over, insert a hook into that hole, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through two. As you can see, each stitch and the other side of the stitch are crocheted in the same hole. And now you can keep repeating this step for each stitch. Take your time to crochet those n minus four stitches, and we'll catch up when you are done. Now we need to insert two double crochets into the last stitch. One double crochet. And another double crochet into the same stitch. And then we're gonna join this round by making a slip stitch in the first stitch marked by the stitch marker. Insert a hook in that stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and simply put through the loop on your hook. So we have completed our first stitch. Now let's chain two for the second round. From here on, things will be relatively straightforward. We just need to crochet one double crochet in each stitch, and each round will consist of twice of the value of M minus two stitches in total. For me, that means 30 stitches. So now, take your time to keep crocheting, and come back when you finish the last stitch. Here, I've completed the last stitch of the second round. If you're funny, it's a bit tricky to figure out which stitch is the last one, and you don't want to keep counting stitches, don't worry. I've got two handy trickies you can try out. If you've already placed a stitch marker, then the fourth V stitch counting back from your stitch marker will be the last stitch. One, two, three. So the next stitch will be the last stitch you need to crochet. If you haven't used a stitch marker, that's okay too. You can simply pinch your work when you feel like you're getting close to the last stitch and check if you reach the edge. Just like how it is now, it means that you still need to crochet one more double crochet to reach the edge. After completing the final stitch, it should look something like this. And to find the first stitch, we will need to make a slip stitch. It would be the fourth V stitch after the last stitch. One, two, three. And the next one would be the stage we need to make a slip stage. The three stitches we skipped is actually the slip stage at the end of the previous round, and the two chain stitches that begin the current round. I believe that you've totally mastered this pattern. And now, all you need to do is keep repeating it until you reach the height you want. While you're hooking away, you can grab the stuff you want to put in the pouch and see if it fits just right. For my AirPods, adding two more rounds of double crochet on the top of its head is the perfect fit. So now take your time to crochet the final double crochet of the last round, and then we can pick up from there. Here I finished the last stage, and the final round is actually where we'll place the drawstring. 
So next, if you want to change colors like I did, prepare another color of yarn to switch. However, if you prefer to use just one color, you can skip the part of changing yarn. Just make the slip stitch the same way as before. As for now, I've completed the final stitch but haven't made the slip stitch yet. We're going to use another color of yarn to make the slip stitch. First, insert a hook into this first stitch. And then pull up the new color of yarn and complete the slip stitch. After that, give both yarn ends a gentle tuck to tighten them. And then cut off the extra yarn from the old color leaving both ends about 4 cm long. This way, it'll be easy to whip them in later. For this round, we'll crochet a complete round of single crochet stitches. So, chain 1 first. And then we're gonna make a single crochet. After inserting a hook, Make sure that the two leftover yarn ends are between your hook and the working yarn. This way, you'll be able to weave them in as you go. Yarn over, pop a loop. Yarn over, put the two. Keep following the same process for each stitch. If the yarn ends happen to stick out a bit, don't worry. We'll take care of those details later on. After completing the last stitch, you may notice a V-shaped stitch from the old color. This is a slip stitch from the previous round. Skip over it and go directly to the first stitch of the new color to make a slip stitch for this round. After inserting your hook, if you'd like to add another color for the final edging like I did, you can grab another color of yarn and follow the same process to switch colors. However, if you prefer not to switch colors again, you can simply ignore that part about changing yarn and make the slip stitch using the current color. I want to switch to a pink yarn. So after insert hook, pull up the new color of yarn and make a slip stitch. And once again, cut the extra of the old color yarn. Give both yarn ends a gentle tuck to tighten them. And then you can start with the main. For this round's pattern, start by 3 chains. And then skip the next stitch and make a slip stitch in the following stitch. Remember to keep the two yarn ends between your crochet hook and the working yarn as you walk through the stitches. After completing the final slip stitch, leave about 5 cm so we can whip in. After cutting the yarn, simply pull off the loop on the hook. Next, we're weaving the yarn ends using either a crochet hook or a downy needle. Personally, I prefer using a crochet hook directly for this step. Find a nearby inner loop, insert a hook, and make a slip stitch to secure the yarn end. 
You can flip your work inside out to make it easier. And next, with the yarn end through a few more inner loops. And then make another slip stitch. Once that's done, you can go ahead and cut the yarn. And next, we can deal with the remaining yarn ends. If there are longer ends sticking out, make a slip stitch to secure them and then cut off the extras. And if there are only a few small yarn tails sticking out, carefully cut off the extras. Ta-da! Our main body is now complete. And next, we're gonna crochet the drawstring part. For the drawstring, let's start by crocheting from the small ball at the end. Let's begin by making six single crochets into the magic ring. If you're not familiar with the magic ring, you can check my previous tutorial. After making six single crochets, tighten the yarn tail and join the circle with a slip stitch. And then chain one for the next round. According to the pattern, we're gonna make two single crochet stitches in each stitch around. So we're gonna have a total of 12 stitches. See you there? After completing the 12th stitch, join the circle with a slip stitch. And then chain 1 for the next round. For this round, we simply need to crochet one single crochet into each stitch. So we have 12 stitches in total. Now take your time and we'll catch up later. After the last stitch, join the circle with a slip stitch. At this point, you can flip your work and cut the inner yarn tail. In this round, we'll be working in the front loop only, and we're gonna make six decrease stitches. First, we're gonna chain one, and then find the front loop of the first stitch, which is the loop closest to the outside. Insert a hook through the front loop of the first stitch, and then go directly to the front loop of the second stitch. You have three loops on your hook. And then yarn over, put through the first two loops on your hook. And yarn over again, put through the two loops on your hook. This makes one decrease. Continue by repeating this process for the remaining five decrease stitches. After finishing all decrease stitches, you can fill the small bow with some carton or scrap yarn to make it appear fuller. And now join the circle with the slip stitch once again. And then we're gonna chain. The length of the chain will depend on how long you want your drawstring to be. And it should be at least twice as wide as the pouch. Here I think is enough for me. To ensure we have enough yarn for further steps, we're gonna cut the yarn leaving about 10 centimeters of yarn tail. After cutting the yarn, thread the yarn tail through a yarn needle. And 
we're gonna thread the drawstring through the last round of double crochet stitches. You can choose to go through one stitch at a time or multiple stitches at a time. I'm gonna choose to through one stitch like this one. Continue threading the yarn needle through the double crochet stitches until you reach the starting point. We reach the starting point. We don't need to remove the needle. We need to continue sewing the small ball closed. Here we have left 6 stitches remaining. So now starting from the stitch next to the chain, thread the needle through the front loop of each stitch like this. While threading through, there is no need to tighten the yarn yet. After threading through all 6 stitches, pull the yarn tightly to close the small ball. And then insert the needle from the center hole to the bottom of the bar. And give it a slight torque to make the bar look more rounded overall. After that, thread the needle back through the side hole. And then find a nearby suitable loop and make a knot to secure it in place. Now thread the yarn into the bore and bring it out in any spot you prefer. Give it a gentle tug to tighten the yarn. And then cut the extra yarn. If you wish to have two drawstrings like I did, repeat the process once more. However, if you only want one drawstring, then congratulations, you have done your pouch. <laughs>